All right, folks, Cursor Support just landed. Let's dive right in. So last week we announced that we just made your LLM smarter. Now this is on our blog, so feel free to dive in to get all the details. But the TLDR is that monorepos have a lot of data and usually your LLM gets smarter the more data you feed it. Now, obviously you cannot just provide the entire monorepo because that might be like thousands and thousands of files. And it might also be quite tough for the LLM to actually process all of these and understand like what's going on. Now, NX has a lot of data, a lot of metadata about your monorepo for the purpose of optimizing operations, right? So to make sure things run faster, can run in parallel, how the different projects are related to each other to make sure we just run the projects that are actually affected by a change. So a lot of information that is actually really useful for an LLM to make higher level reasonings possible. Now, last week when we announced the first version, we integrated into our editor extension, NX Console Copilot support. So you can already try that out and play around with it. And now today we are launching Cursor support as well. So when you open up Cursor and you have NX Console installed, you should see here a notification pop up that says improve Cursor agents with NX specific context. Now if you say yes, this is going to configure a Cursor MCP server. We are going to dive into that in a second. So you can then open up the settings, go to the MCP screen and make sure this is enabled. Like the first time around, this is a cursor specific thing. It might be disabled. So once you click this one here, you see all the different tools that the NX MCP server will expose to cursor to be used. You will also see this dot cursor file here, which is here having that MCP JSON where it configures the port where the actual underlying MCP server is running such that cursor can reach into it to get more context, more information about your workspace. Now, in case you missed that notification and you want to configure it later, you can always run with NX console installed, configure MCP server, and that will bring up this pop-up again, which allows you to again go to the MCP settings, enable your cursor NX MCP integration, and it will also recreate here the MCP file if that is not there. Otherwise, it will just insert the NX specific MCP server here. Now, for changing these settings or inspecting them, you can always go to the preferences, click cursor specific preferences, go in here, go to these MCP settings, and then here you should see the specific installed MCP servers. So let's have a look what that means when you interact with it in cursor. So here, for instance, I'm asking cursor, what happens if I change the public API of the feature product detail, which is one of the projects in our workspace here. And so here now you can see it calls this MCP tool and X workspace to gather more data about what the project relationships are. It then calls the visualize tool to actually show it right inside the IDE by invoking the graph tool from NX console from an extension. And you can see how it already shows us the different relationships between the project. Now cursor, depending on the model here, I'm using Claude Sonnet 3.7. It also gives you much more explanations behind the scenes such as uh, info that it has about ownership, here, for instance, it shows that it is owned by the products domain team. So these are the people that you need to reach out potentially. And if you're using the agent mode in Cursor, these interactions can become much more powerful because Cursor automatically invokes one of these tools to get more information if it needs to. And so, for instance, in this case here, I'm asking Cursor to actually create a new project here into this orders domain. So I'm just like saying, use NX to generate a new React library for handling, in this case, past orders. And so you can see now that Cursor invokes the tool, first of all, to get information about the workspace structure, but then immediately it calls the NX generators to understand what generators are available. It invokes the schemas to get the data of which generator to use. It figures out, based on the information about the workspace structure, where to place the products probably, because of the other products that are already there, which is packages slash orders, and then it configures the actual generator with the correct parameters. You can see here it automatically runs it. I'm running here in YOLO mode, so I don't need to approve every tool invocation. So Cursor does it here completely automatically. And then it goes and checks actually structure. You can already see the product is generated with one of the NX generators. It's a pretty standard setup with exports. In this case, it actually ran a compiled product. You can see how it exports the JS files. And you can also see it added tags because our other projects contain such NX tags to categorize our projects and use model boundary rules, for instance. So Cursor figured it needs to add similar tags in here and it correctly named those with having scope orders and type feature. Now in this specific case, it even continues going ahead and looking at the actual component. So you can see here it creates a new example component based on my other 
dummy example components here, and it references the data access products because it knows that this project here has also a data access library for fetching data. And so it figures it should use that one also in this specific product. So it links them properly in the dependencies, as you can see here. It links the UI or detail, which we might very likely use for building up the UI for this feature library. And also correctly links the data access order library in here for data fetching mechanisms. So if you look into the details of what just happened here, it is actually pretty remarkable because this is exactly the type of interaction we want to achieve by this LLM integration. So we leveraged here an NX generator so we make sure that the actual structure is being created is actually predictable because we know how to set these up. But then Cursor was intelligent enough to leverage existing information from other projects in that same domain area, which it figured out on its own based on the product relationships from NX metadata to also then reference the correct data access and UI order detail properties and libraries. And so if you show uh, the product graph here, you can see this is here our newly created project, which is not yet linked in any application because like it's not clear where it is actually being used, but it actually accesses here the proper data access order library. It also pulls in the UI order detail project, which might contain your order specific UI elements. And so it figured that out on its own which is actually pretty powerful interaction. And so apart from these editing interactions, since we also expose the NX docs to cursor, it is able to invoke it for getting more information. And so useful scenarios can also be such as in this case, where I'm just asking cursor to configure the NX release functionality for my packages repository here. And so I'm giving it some more information such as I want to use conventional comments. And now you can see again, it invokes the workspace structure tool, it reads the NX JSON, and then it invokes NX docs completely automatically and on its own. It gets data about the release configuration, about how NX release in general works, about how NX JSON is being configured. And once it has all that, it actually adjusts the NX JSON to add in the release section in here. It also gives us a bunch more explanation of what the different configuration changes actually mean. Uh, but if you look at the NX JSON here, you can see we have now the release section, we have the conventional comments as the version strategy, also different configuration options for the change log, etc. And so this can be super helpful for quickly configuring an X for a specific aspect rather than having to go necessarily to the docs, but be able to directly do it in your editor. So what is an MCP, which stands for Model Context Protocol? Now this is a protocol pioneered by Anthropic to actually try to standardize this interaction between the LLM that needs to get more context specific data based on a query it gets. And so if you go to the modelcontextprotocol.io website, that's where you find all the different SDKs which you can use to actually build such an MCP uh, server and MCP integration. And interestingly here on the introduction page, there's a nice general architecture diagram, which is actually really useful for understanding how this works. So here basically you have the MCP client, which can be Claude. It can be your IDE that implements such an MCP support. Uh, Cursor is one example, for instance. And then you have these MCP servers, which are very specific to their context, which then know how to get more data, right? So either they have access to some database, they access a website on the internet to pull in more data, or just on the file system, they parse certain files and elaborate them and expose them in a much more LLM friendly way. Now here you can also see there are different kind of concepts here. So you, they can expose different prompts, tools, uh, resources, etc. So how does that look like in the context of NX? Now NX has already NX console. So that's an extension that works for VS Code, for IntelliJ, and obviously also for Cursor. And so what we did is rather than exposing the MCP server as a file, which you could also do, where the client will instantiate it and then just run the server for on its own, we actually instantiate the server over the extension because the NX console already has an NX language server, which it uses for parsing NX specific metadata and providing enhancements. And so this was a good opportunity for us to expose over that. Now, if you look at a similar architectural diagram, this is what it roughly looks like. So you have your cursor, could also be Claude or some other MCP compatible uh, tool, some compatible client. And then you have this NX MCP server that we installed just before, which then exposes these available tools, which are for exposing workspace specific data, relationships between products, all the product details, uh, also generators obviously, and such that it is able to run generators when we ask it to create projects, as well as also the docs where it can then reach out to the NXO dev website, the actual NX official docs, and pull in data from there. 
One Eyes Edition is also here the NX Visual Graph, which does not just provide data, but it actually triggers action back into the editor. So this is very much version 1.0. We are at the edge of development here. As we were implementing some of these features, the MCP protocol evolved to become more powerful and the cursor team shipped updates that will be really useful for us to enhance the experience. So you will definitely hear from us, both from the cursor side of things, but also from the GitHub Copilot side of things. That said, we're highly interested in your feedback. So if you don't have NX Console installed yet, I'll make sure to include the download link and installation setup link in the description of this video. There's also a link for the in-depth blog post about all these features, how the MCP protocol works and how we integrate it into Cursor. So definitely check that out. And as always, like and subscribe to this video. We highly appreciate that. Reach out to us on our socials and I'll see you all in the next one.